From my perspective, when you're talking about a property of this magnitude, and it is relatively challenging and relatively unique, there are probably a few dozen architects in the nation that are exceptional and can do this. We have lived in a lot of different places, and we wanted to, at this point in our lives, get back to um, be closer to family. And we had an opportunity to find a, a really unique property. We interviewed five different builders. We asked each of those builders a series of questions. One of those questions was, what architects do you have most respect for, think they do the best job? It was the Friday of Memorial Weekend, 2014. I got the call, would I be available to go meet this client? They were actually interviewing a general contractor, allowing me the opportunity to walk the lot. And I just fell in love with the lot. This property was the first mayor of Minneapolis's home. When the last remaining heir who lived here passed away a number of years ago, and it took a while for it to sell. Part of that was it was the back end of the housing crisis, but part of that was it's a difficult lot to build upon. This lot is a pristine lot. It's a peninsula overlooking Wayzata Bay. It is not very wide. Uh, the footprint that the original home was on was essentially what we were limited to. We went into the existing home and spoke briefly. We didn't speak that much. So I'm pulling out of the driveway and the client, you know, raced me down and said, what are you doing? And he said, you got the job, join us for the last contractor interview. So I said, okay, I rolled up my window and I was just giddy. Most homes have one view. We went to her and asked her to try and design a home that capitalized on 360 degrees. You know, then that excitement quickly subsided with, oh my gosh, I, I better do a good job because everybody on Wayzata Bay is gonna be seeing this home. Whether we're talking Wayzata, or Minnetonka, or Deep Haven, or of course Woodland. We wanted everybody when they looked at this to be um, supportive of and proud of what was built here. Anything that we were gonna do required a variance. And there was a big risk involved because if we did not get a variance for that project, then there would be no Cedar Point. We took her to some of the other interviews with builders and it was amazing to watch her personality shift from when we were talking with her about architecture to her now being an advocate for us relative to selecting the other team members. And I think that was tremendously helpful in ensuring that we selected the right builder that really did allow us to pull together a team of people that allowed this to be possible. So fortunately we got it and we were able to start construction all within that year. We have had a vision of what we wanted to build, but we also know that we're not architects, we're not home builders, we're not landscape architects. We brought together people with talent and we wanted them to be able to uh, use that. And if they saw something that was not gonna lead to the best end product, we wanted them to speak up. He gave one image of a Victorian house. It had a wrapper on porch. Just one image is all he gave. I knew we would end up with something better if we took their talents, and brought them together, and let them move forward with those talents. It's very rare for a client to say, I don't want to tell you. I want you to tell me what this house should be. Rather than trying to tell her how to do her job, we told her we were about casual, we wanted to take advantage of the views, and she knew what their constraints were for the property, and we gave her a green light to go design something. She came back shortly thereafter with a sketch which I think perfectly captured what we were looking for at that point. And that didn't get into the detail of the design, but it got into the understanding as to where she was taking the project, and that gave us great confidence. Which again, incredibly daunting. Like, no, I want this to be your house. I don't want it to be my house. But he really did put the pressure on to create something beautiful, innovative. He kept saying he wanted to be worthy of being on the cover of Architectural Digest. He did keep wanting whimsy. And to him, I think whimsy meant fun and not so serious. At the same time, he wanted timeless, and I wanted timeless. Other areas of, of innovation, there's no front back side to this house. I mean, every side of the house is a front facade that has a breathtaking view of the lake. So we brought the entire home to one universal point internally, and that's the double barrel vault. And I can't be more proud of everyone involved with this project. And we had the American Institute of Architecture tour. They 
had access to the home for a weekend. I think about a thousand people came through. And of course, we did as anyone else did. We snuck in as if we were just other interested parties to hear what people were saying about our home. And it was tremendously gratifying, I think, for us and certainly for the other members of the team because uniformly, whether we were talking with realtors or other builders or other architects or interior designers, every comment we heard was that it is absolutely spectacular and is perfect for the location. It's rewarding to hear that.